Hello, friends. I've got a great show today. It's about a topic that is interesting to a lot of the audience here, which is fertilizer, and it's also about weeds and one common weed in particular, dandelion or Taraxacum officinal, and that particular weed. If you call it a weed, or you could call it a、uh, a salad garnish, or something like that. My mom likes to eat dandelion leaves, or you could call it a pollinator-friendly plant for people that like to have、um, bees flying around and enjoying the flowers of dandelion. So you may enjoy dandelion, or you may want to get rid of it. But I think there's something that really flies under the radar. In the turf grass industry, and that is the effect that potassium in the soil and potassium fertilizer can have on the prevalence of dandelions. This is something that I want to share with you, and you will find a direct link to the post that I'm going to talk about. The post has a title of. Dandelions and potassium, so it's an easy one. You can search for that on Google and add an Asian turf grass to that and to that search, and you will bring up this post. Or go to AsianTurfGrass.com, and I don't write about dandelions very often. So if you go to the search and search for dandelions, I'm pretty sure that this post is going to be the one that turns up at the top of the. List of posts that's returned, and you can also go to the show notes or the video description, whether you're listening to this or whether you're watching it, and I will put a direct link to this dandelions and potassium post into the show notes. This is a post that I wrote on Christmas Day of 2019. My friend had given me a beautiful card. And written, perhaps you can use this Taraxacum officinal dandelion in some capacity. And I showed a picture of this card, which was some beautiful artwork, beautiful artwork of dandelion flowers. And I thought, wow, that's a beautiful card. How could I make use of this? And when I thought about it, I didn't have to think very long because I remembered that. There was a really interesting article by Tillman et al. where they had looked at the effect of potassium fertilizer in lawns on the abundance of dandelion. So I thought, well, I'll quickly use that card introduction and my friend suggesting that perhaps I can use it in some capacity. And I said, let me write a blog post about it. Because I want more people to be aware of this. I wanted more people to be aware of this back in 2019, and I would like more people to be aware of it now. Because there's really no reason to be slinging lime or potassium onto turf when you have a big dandelion problem. Because it's likely that both the lime and the potassium could be contributing to the ability of the dandelion to invade. And then persist in the turf grass. So this is something that might be really relevant to you if you are involved in lawn maintenance, or really relevant to you if you're involved in golf course maintenance and you've got large areas of rough or fairway that have some dandelion issues, or if you have lawns around the property. That have some dandelions or sports turf, and you have some dandelions or parks. Parks often have a lot of dandelions. So, if you would like to minimize dandelions without herbicides, I have got an idea for you. And this is also interesting. Even if you have none of those issues, maybe you're in a part of the world like southern Thailand, where I am right now, where there are no dandelions. You may just find this interesting from a scientific perspective and from a history of science perspective, because this this idea that potassium has an effect on dandelions goes back to something that was discovered in the famous park grass experiment, 
And it's always fun when I have a chance to talk about the park grass experiment. And in fact, this post includes an interesting photo from the park grass experiment. So if you're interested in that, you may, you may like this also just from a uh, history of science perspective. So uh, the article by Tillman et al. has a title of Biological Weed Control Via Nutrient Competition potassium limitation of dandelions. They looked at data from the famous park grass experiment. And if you don't know what the park grass experiment is, it's an experiment on what was a hay meadow at the Rothamsted estate, which is in Harpenden, Hertfordshire, England, just north of London. That was the estate of John Bennett Laws. And he started doing agricultural experiments and fertilizer experiments and ecological experiments back in the 1840s, I believe. And he started a particular experiment, which is now one of the famous long-term experiments that continues to this day at the Rothamsted estate. Now, now it's the Rothamsted Research um, Institute, or it's just called Rothamsted Research, I believe. It is a a world-class research facility. And there's an experiment called park grass that was begun in 1856. That's more than 160 years ago, almost 170 years now that experiment's been going. And what it, what it was initially done, uh, it, it was initially done to look at the effect of different fertilizers on hay yield, because back in 1856, horses were a um, an engine of transportation, and it was an interesting research topic to find out which fertilizers would provide the highest yield of hay and also the most nutritious hay for the animals and specifically for horses and other beasts of burden that would transport pull carriages and carts and wagons and so on. But as they did that experiment, they quickly found out that the different fertilizers that they'd applied to this hay meadow caused different plants to grow. And that's what's turned out to be really interesting about that experiment, as that experiment has been continued now for 167 years or so since, since that time. So um, in Tillman's article, Tillman et al.'s article, they looked at data from this famous park grass experiment, and they found that the plots that receive potassium fertilizer, listen to this, and I'm going to quote now, led to a 20-fold increase in taraxacum abundance in the classical data. That's data acquired prior to 1976. And a four-fold increase in the modern data. That's data acquired from 1991 to 1993. Lime, or calcium carbonate, led to a three-fold increase in taraxacum in the classical data and to a four-fold increase in the modern data. A 20-fold increase, that's like uh, 2,000% more. 2,000% more potassium, uh, sorry, more dandelion in the plots that received potassium fertilizer. So there seems to be something going on there. And there is a photo of this striking effect in the article that, Dr. Frank Rossi and I published in the Green Section Record some years ago. I will put a link to that article also, and you can see that specific photo that I'm referring to. And if I can find it on the Rothamsted Parkgrass website, I'll also put a link to that type of photo that shows the huge difference in dandelion flowers. And consequently, um, there's a lot of plants growing, but the, at the time of the year when the dandelions are in flower... They are very striking in the plots with high dandelion populations, and they are noticeably absent in some of the plots, and particularly in the 1D plot, which is the plot that receives only ammonium sulfate 
and has not received potassium fertilizer or lime for more than 160 years. So they looked at this data, and that's one part of their paper. They also, in Minnesota, did a greenhouse experiment, and they measured dandelion and grass growth in response to potassium supply. And they also measured um, dandelion abundance in some unfertilized and un herbicide, no uh, non-herbicide treated lawns in Minnesota. And results from both of those follow-up studies suggested that dandelion has a higher potassium requirement than do some common or yeah, they, than do some common long grasses. So dandelion has a higher potassium requirement, it appears, than some common lawn grasses. This is Interesting. I'm going to see if I can share share the abstract of this paper. The article is by Elizabeth Tillman, David Tillman, Michael Crawley, A.E. Johnston. Some, some pretty big names there as the authors of this article. It was published in Ecological Applications, which is a Ecological Society of America journal in the February 1999 issue, and the article title, again, I'll put a direct link to this also in the show notes. The article title is Biological Weed Control Via Nutrient Competition, Potassium Limitation of Dandelions, and I'll read from the abstract and some some of the relevant parts here. They wrote, Weedy plants are often controlled by the application of herbicides. Here, we explore an alternative method of control. We suggest that the abundance of an undesired plant species, here dandelions, Taraxacum officinal, may be controlled by modifying interspecific competition via changes in resource supply rates. In this case, they're talking about competition between dandelions and the desired grasses by altering the supply rate of potassium to those species. And they, they wrote, this hypothesis is supported by several lines of evidence. First, analyses of different patterns of fertilization on plant species abundance in the 140-year-old parkgrass experiment at Rothamsted, England, Notice they wrote 140 years. That was in, at the time that they wrote this, it's in 1999, and it is now considerably older. It's, it's uh, almost 170 years old at this point. So they wrote that those experiments show that taraxicum abundances were highly dependent on potassium fertilization and on liming, but not on addition of other nutrients. Potassium fertilization led to a 17 to 20 fold increase in taraxicum abundances in the classical park grass data and to a 4 to 7 fold increase in the modern data. Liming led to a 2 to 3 fold increase for classical data and to a 3 to 4 fold increase for modern data. So they, uh, that's just a huge difference. But it, it's a huge difference, and they found that in their greenhouse study in Minnesota and in their lawn survey uh, in Minnesota, they found that there was more potassium in the dandelion leaves in the lawns that had a lot of dandelion in them. And the, the lawns that did not have so much dandelion in them had dandelion plants with less potassium in them. And when they did the greenhouse experiment, they found that dandelion had a higher requirement for potassium and had its biomass more limited by potassium than any of five common grass species from the park grass experiment. And they conclude the abstract by writing This demonstration that desired and weedy plant species can differ in their resource requirements suggests that adjustments in resource supply rates may determine the outcome of interspecific competition, 
allowing desired species to competitively control weedy species. In particular, for soils with low potassium levels, the use of potassium-free lawn fertilizer is predicted to decrease taraxacum, or dandelion, because of competition from grasses like Festuca rubra. So that's where it doesn't make sense to me. It, it doesn't make sense to me at all to try to lime lawns to an arbitrary neutral pH. And it doesn't make sense to me to add potassium to lawns in amounts that are greater than that required by the grass. Because in doing that, you can favor weeds such as dandelion. So that is something that I'm not sure everybody knows. I don't hear this talked about very often. But I do see soil test reports and fertilizer recommendations from conventional laboratories, whether that's from private laboratories or from university extension laboratories that are often making lime recommendations to an arbitrary neutral pH and making potassium recommendations that seem to be in amounts that are greater than the amount of potassium required by the grass. So the conventional way of doing it, the conventional way of applying a complete fertilizer and liming to a neutral pH might be leading to a better growing environment for dandelions and a, a growing environment in lawns and in turf grass that makes it easier for the dandelion to grow and easier for the dandelions to persist. Back to my blog post, and I, I said there that I would recommend uh, MLSN. I, I wrote in the blog post, I said, I'd usually recommend enough potassium fertilizer to keep soil from dropping below 37 parts per million on a Malik 3 soil test. However, if the grass is performing well and if one is trying to prevent dandelions, I'd avoid K and lime applications to minimize dandelion competitiveness so long as the grass continues to perform well. Now, MLSN stands for Minimum Levels for Sustainable Nutrition, and it is a modern method for turf grass soil test interpretation that makes a recommendation for the amount of potassium and the amount of other macro and secondary elements that are applied as fertilizer, it makes a recommendation for them based on the type of grass that you're growing, the type of climate that you're growing in, and what's actually in the soil. And it ensures that you won't have a deficiency, but it's not making recommendations, just trying to hit some arbitrary levels in the soil that are set artificially high because they're based on optimum yields for agriculture. And turf grasses are a excellent uh, crop for growing well in and producing an excellent turf grass stand and being very competitive, out-competing weeds such as dandelion at relatively low nutrient levels. So I, I think there's opportunity to do better and opportunity to minimize the competitiveness of weeds like dandelion simply by fertilizer choice. I'm going to read now from the discussion section of Tillman et al.'s article. And there was a particular set of sentences that I, I thought were very clear. And it's not just me who sometimes says that the plot 1D, which only receives ammonium sulfate for more than 160 years and no lime and no potassium and no phosphorus, it's not only me that thinks this at some times of the year, looks quite like a lawn. So I'm going to quote now from, from the discussion of their article. They wrote, Such adjustments, 
and they're talking here about, excuse me, they're talking about adjustments in nutrient supply and in the competition between species. Such adjustments might be best achieved by not adding the resource for which the weedy species is an inferior competitor, but by adding one or more other limiting resources. So you would like um, not apply potassium because dandelion is an inferior competitor for potassium compared to grasses, but you would add another limiting resource like nitrogen. And that that is actually what was done. So uh, continuing from what they wrote, I quote, interestingly, fertilization with just ammonium sulfate at park grass led to an amazingly lawn-like vegetation that was 62% agrostis tenuous or bent grass, 29% festuca rubra, red fescue, 5% other perennial grasses, and that had no taraxicum and only 5% of biomass from other forbs. So 95% of the biomass there is from grasses. And this is specifically, it's the plot 1D. And I put a picture of that. I put a picture of that plot that was taken in June of 2015, I believe. Yeah, there, there's a plot, a, a photo in this blog post of plot 1D and also plot 1C. Plot 1C has received, uh, has received lime, but has not received potassium. And plot 2 um, I believe has, has received potassium. I, I would have to check the plot plan on that. But the, the main thing to look at in this picture is plot 1D wh where there, there are no dandelions. It's completely free of dandelions and it looks like a lawn. And I close, uh, I close by bringing this back to greenkeeping and a famous golf course architect, Alistair McKenzie and his, his quote about the fundamental principle of greenkeeping. He wrote, The fundamental principle of successful greenkeeping is the recognition of the fact that the finest golfing grasses flourish on poor soil and that more harm is done by over rather than under fertilizing. So that's something that uh, is tied in with this lawn maintenance or rough maintenance or any type of turf maintenance. Um, where actually fertilizing with potassium when it's not necessary for the grass could cause harm. And adding lime or calcium carbonate when it's not required can cause harm. And the harm in this particular instance would be the proliferation or the ability of uh, the ability for the proliferation of dandelion and it just doesn't make any sense to me why one would do that uh, w it seems to me that that the goal of fertilization should be to favor the desired species and produce a high quality turf of the favored species while avoiding application of anything that could allow weeds to invade so in this particular case I think it's useful to pay attention to soil pH and pay attention to the soil potassium level. And if you're trying to minimize dandelion and trying to minimize dandelion while also minimizing um, pesticide and herbicide application, it makes sense to me to make sure that you don't add potassium fertilizer that is not necessary. And it makes sense to me that you would certainly avoid lime unless your turf grass is severely limited in growth by having too much, uh, too much soluble aluminum there, or if the soil pH is so low that you have some restriction in soil microbial activity. So that is, to me is uh, absolutely fascinating. The park grass experiment is absolutely fascinating. The many practical things that can be learned from the park grass experiment are very fascinating. And uh, I'll, I'll put some links 
in the show notes. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, the links that you'll find in the show notes or in the video description today will lead to that particular research article uh, by Tillman et al. And to the park grass page, I'll put a link to the park grass page um, from Rothamsted Research and to the article that I wrote with Frank Rossi that's in the green section record. And um, you can certainly explore and, and learn more about this uh both about this particular dandelion and potassium issue and about the fascinating park grass experiment. All right. Thank you very much for your interest in these topics. Thanks for listening. For ATC from Yantikau, Thailand, I am Micah Woods. <laughs>